Okay, this video is about elasticity and in particular how do we connect the concept of elasticity with microeconomic modeling. So I'd like to look at an example that I use a lot in class, which is the example of a student trying to decide how much time to spend studying and we have this grades model that we've gone over and I'd like to connect that model with the concept of elasticity. So just to remind you, um, elasticity is the percent change in the dependent variable divided by the percent change in the independent variable. So any two variables that have a relationship in your model are going to have an inherent elasticity. Now that elasticity may not be measurable, but that's not really the point. One of the um, exciting things about economic modeling is that you don't need things to be measurable in order to think about causality. Um, and of course we need to remind ourselves that elasticity has two features. It has magnitude and direction. So let's just keep that in mind as we look at this. And let me write that just to be clear. So magnitude is going to tell us is there a really strong relationship between these, these two variables if one changes a little bit, if the independent variable changes a little bit, is the dependent variable super responsive to that, that change, or um, is it the reverse? Is it that we change the independent variable a whole lot and we only get a very small change in the dependent variable? So. Um, uh, that w that's going to be associated with a, a small elasticity, whereas a huge response is going to be associated with a large elasticity in magnitude. And direction, of course, just says, um, is there a positive or negative relationship between these two variables? Is the slope on the graphs a positive slope or a negative slope? And if you increase the independent variable, does the dependent variable increase, in which case it's a positive direction? Um, or when you increase the independent variable, does the dependent variable decrease? In which case, they go in opposite directions, so it's a negative relationship, and the slope on your graphs, of course, is going to be negative. So, let's look at our example that has to do with grades and studying. Alright, here's our model. So we've got um, a person maximizing by choosing the time they spend studying, and they're maximizing their objective function, which is their grades, which are a function of time spent studying, and grades are also a function of intelligence, so an intelligence is going to modify the relationship between grades and studying, minus opportunity cost of that time, which is a function, of course, of how much time you spend studying, and also the value of your time generally. So, for example, how many extracurricular activities you might be involved with. Um, that's our model. <clears throat> we can already see in the model that there's a number of variable relationships, and all of these relationships have an independent variable, dependent variable um, relationship between the two. You can figure out which of these is independent and which of these is dependent. Um, and to do that, um, basically the independent variable is going to influence the dependent variable. So in this case, um, let's let independent be green. Um, in, in this particular relationship pair, we have independent, independent variable being time spent studying, and that's going to influence grades. And we'll let grades be, um, we'll let dependent variables be red. So you can look at any other variable pair in this model and you can tell what's the relationship. For example, the relationship between A and opportunity cost. That relationship is one where we have an independent variable A which influences the opportunity cost. So the number of activities you're involved in influences um, the opportunity cost of your time. So activities um, is going to be our independent variable in this pair and opportunities is going to be the dependent variable. Sorry, opportunity cost is going to be the dependent variable here. All right, and we of course know that we can take the first order conditions and we can also draw pictures of these graphs. So we can draw grades and we can draw opportunity cost as a function of time spent studying. And we've talked about the reason why the grades function here is diminishing at the margin. Um, <clears throat> there's diminishing diminishing marginal benefit to studying in terms of the effect on your grades. And there's increasing marginal cost. I'll make this 
um, a dotted line. The opportunity cost has a classic opportunity cost shape where it's increasing at the margin because the more time you spend studying, the more valuable the activities you give up in your life to spend that extra time studying are. So natural um, increasing marginal cost shape to the marginal cost curve. So we have these shapes of these functions. Now, we can take the first order conditions of this, so let's do that. And in taking the first order conditions, we take the derivative of the whole payoff function, which I represent as pi, with respect to our choice variable s. And to do that, we're going to have the derivative of grades with respect to s. I'm not finished with the first order condition, but let me just point something out. Um, we notice that the natural way that you write this derivative also matches up with the way elasticities go. So we've got our dependent variable in the numerator, and we've got our independent variable <coughs> in the denominator. Um, so this actually, this notation, when you're taking derivatives, matches up really nicely with elasticities that economists like to use. And this is why we like to think of things in elasticities. It just works really well for our modeling process. So um, in taking this first order condition, we've taken the derivative of the grades function with respect to s. And we know that that derivative is going to be the tangent of the um, grades function at, at, at a particular point. So um, it's going to be the slope of the tangent. We might also remind ourselves that grades is also a function of i just in case we forget, because if we increase intelligence, that could rotate up our grades function for every half hour we spend studying. That half hour might be more productive if our intelligence is higher. And then so we take the derivative of that with respect to s, minus the derivative of the opportunity cost with respect to s, with respect to the time spent studying, where opportunity cost is also a function of activities. We're just reminding ourselves of that. And of course, like all first order conditions, we set it equal to zero. Um, and once again, we're going to point out that the relationship here, S, influences O, uh, influences opportunity cost. So opportunity cost is the dependent variable, and time spent studying is the independent variable in this particular relationship. Um, now, we know that when we solve the first order conditions, what it's going to give us at the end of the day after we've done all the algebra to get this first order condition to an actual solution, and of course the solution is going to be S star. And S star is not the same thing as S, just to remind you. S here is a flexible S. It can take on any value above zero. You can spend as much time as you want studying or as little time as you want studying. This is a flexible S. S star is different. S star is the optimal s. It's one particular value of s, and it's going to be the value where the difference between those is greatest, or where marginal cost equals marginal uh, marginal benefit. Well, you get the point. So that's s star. And we know that the solution s star is a particular value of s, and it's going to end up being a function of all of our exogenous variables in our model. So it's going to be a function of i, intelligence, and it's going to be a function of activities. Meaning if you want to know how much time a student spends studying, you need to know their intelligence and their extracurricular activities in order to determine um, what their optimal amount of time studying is. So um, this is the solution to our model. And you notice that that solution also has some independent dependent variable relationships here. Um, as a matter of fact, here we have <clears throat> our independent variable is intelligence and our dependent variable is optimal time spent studying. Same thing here. Um, our independent variable is extracurricular activities and our dependent variable is optimal time spent studying S star. And because of that, this just adds to the number of elasticities we've got out there. So you might imagine you could go out there and measure some of these things. You could measure people's IQ and the amount of time they spend studying, and then you could, you could test that relationship within the context of the model you've set up. Now, one thing I want to point out when we look at this graph is that the elasticity is different on different parts of the graph. So um, if we're looking at the elasticity of 
g with respect to s, that depends on where on the graph you are. So if you're at this s, um, you have a pretty, uh, the, the magnitude of this elasticity is pretty high. Now it's always a positive direction. You always increase your grades if you increase your time spent studying. That never goes in the reverse direction. I can tell you that as a professor. Um, so the, the direction is always positive, but the magnitude depends on how much you've already studied. So if, if, you, if this is the first half hour in a week you're studying, studying another 10 minutes has a huge marginal benefit. Um, so this is a very responsive um, place on the graph where an increase in S has a big increase on your grades. But if you've already, you're, you're way out here and you've already studied uh, 14 hours in the week, um, studying that extra 10 minutes or that extra half hour actually doesn't have a huge impact on your grades. Um, the elasticity out here is pretty small in magnitude. Um, so the elasticity depends on where you are on that graph and that's going to end up being important when you analyze models to try to connect them with data. A lot of times you observe data points and you have to figure out, okay, that data relationship I'm observing in the real world, where on this graph is that relationship represented? Like, are we, are we on the steep part of the graph or are we, are we on the flat part of the graph? And how much will that change over time? So this is just orienting you to how to use elasticities when you're thinking about economic models and how to recognize independent and dependent variables in the context of your models. And of course, you can use that to connect with data.